Hello to everybody uh, in the room and in the space uh, outside. Uh, I very warmly welcome you to uh, some hopefully exciting uh, sessions that we will start today on how to uh, think about the future of the German model. Um, and in that way to imagine what might be uh, things that the new government that will be elected or uh, via the parliament in, in Germany in September and what will be the essence of uh, what they have to do. And we wanted to cover a lot of the essential things. Just to give you a, a very brief uh, idea again, for most of you, it's uh, not new. What we wanted to do as a forum, we started in 2016 uh, after Brexit and the election of Trump with the idea that there needs to be something new, just not just only uh, individual answers to some specific questions like inequality, climate change, um, market fundamentalism, the, the, what has uh, gone out of it, uh, the crisis of globalization and uh, sort of a crisis of the conventional state. But it's also not only this, it's also about a new paradigm. And that's what we consider, which is, uh, has been lost, this uh, paradigm that drives societies, that drives pol politics and helps to uh, be confident in what uh, policymakers are doing. So. Our interpretation has been that Brexit and Trump has been very much uh, a symptom of uh, the crisis of an old paradigm, which has been very market driven and which has left a lot of uh, negative uh, things behind. Um, we usually present at our now eighth workshop, at our workshops, this a uh, little provocative um, picture where we want to symbolize what it means to have a paradigm. The old paradigm is on the left, you know, black and white, and the very bright and colorful new ones may be on, in the middle. And that's what we show, have shown until recently our, our workshops. And as you can see, some of these uh, that we have put in the bubble are now in very important positions, like Janet Yellen, who's um, state, uh, Secretary of State uh, for Finance in, in the US. And the new thing in 2021, which we will discuss during the afternoon and maybe also tomorrow, is there is something new around, which some already called, called Bidenomics, a uh, policy by, driven by the new uh, US president, which may reflect a lot of what we have already been discussing on inequality, on stability of financial markets, and other things that may come to practice via uh, Joe Biden, and we will discuss this intensely if that's true or not in the course of the afternoon. But it's not only an Anglo-Saxon story. It's not only an Anglo-Saxon issue. Uh, we have driven a lot of polls in the last two years uh, among Germans to see if there is a need in Germany, if there is something, a crisis of confidence and something like a need for a new paradigm in, in Germany. And what we have discovered is that yes, it's very strong and we just put this one chart uh, to show uh, the question was are you um, thinking do you think that social market economy so the famous german social market economy is still delivering and six, 57 percent of people in germany said no it's not and we have had a lot, lot of other questions on privatization the belief in the in the well uh, in the goods of privatization has faded away and a lot of things that reflect this fundamental crisis of um, this market paradigm is already uh, also around in, in Germany. So we did a first workshop on the German model in late in late September last year, uh, where we started to discuss uh, how, in how far these global issues on inequality, globalization, financial markets and other climate something um, and others is relevant for Germany and how is this to be discussed in, in the specific context, uh, context of Germany. Just to re recall, most of you probably have uh, assisted, joined this event in, in September. We had a discussion, a very uh, excellent talk between uh, Joe Stieglitz, Nobel Prize laureate, and the German Minister of Finance, um, Olaf Scholz. We had a, a discussion with Thomas Piketty. We had an intervention by Maya Goebbels. We had uh, the 
uh, German Minister of Health, uh, Jens Spahn, talking about the new role of, of the state, uh, something which he wants to learn from, from, the, uh, from the crisis. At the time, he has been slightly more po uh, popular than he is today, but I think still relevant uh, what he thinks about um, what we can learn from, from the crisis of uh, the state and what has happened, especially in the last few months, uh, also is part of it. Um, the main contributions in form of, of papers that we had in the first workshop um, in September was a paper where Mariana Mazzucato and her team um, tried to apply her famous concept of a mission-oriented industrial policy to Germany, explaining in how far Germany is a role model in some sense, as there has been sort of an industrial policy driven by KFW and others, but in, there's also a need to redefine and to have something new as sort of a real mission-oriented industrial policy. And as probably some of you know, this word of a mission-oriented oriented policy has come back and entered the German policy debate, including the uh, chancellor candidates for, from the FD, uh, SPD. Um, we had another paper and we will uh, set up uh, another session on this uh, tomorrow on the paradigm shifting for Germany's fiscal policy and the Schuldenbremse, the famous one. Uh, and was, this was a study written by Michael Hüter and Jens Südekum, who will be there tomorrow again to discuss and to further discuss this. This was to say there may be also a, a, a need for to renew the whole paradigm of making fiscal policy, and we will learn a lot about this tomorrow again. We had another uh, paper um, uh, in, as part of a bigger project on inequality, um, which has been prepared by Charlotte Bartos and presented at the last workshop. She's again here to, to join the discussion in a, a couple of minutes on inequality. This was about the drivers to identify, first of all, what drives inequality in Germany, which is for us the precondition to know then what would be most efficient to, to turn uh, to, to stop um, the trend to inequality on for income and, and uh, wealth. And we can come back in a minute to this. And we had a, uh, um, a study on the future of German exports. This was very much about the internationally very much criticized uh, current accounts uh, surpluses uh, study uh, written by Achim Truger and, and his colleagues. You will find all these studies on our website, and this is sort of been big topics for when you talk about German model, you talk about exports, about industrial policy, uh, about fiscal policy and equality. And now we want to uh, do the next step. This was just a spot on the uh, study from uh, written by Mariana Matsukato, which, which has been picked up by a couple of newspapers. And as I said, uh, Olaf Scholz to now, now um, come to the program of today and our second part, the second part of the future of the German model, where we wanted to treat some of the topics we have already treated and go beyond what we already discussed and join and have other topics to, to discuss. Um, just a brief overview of what you will hear this afternoon. We will talk about inequality in Germany, as I said, and how to reverse the trend. So this is the third part of our exercise after having the first part uh, collecting the data and knowing what is inequality in Germany and what is it not. The second one was drivers of inequality and we will pick up this uh, again. And the third one now is what helps to prevent income and wealth inequality uh, or will income and wealth from drifting apart. So the discussions uh, are in the room. I will present them in a, sec in a second. Um, just to, to say the next session in the afternoon will be about populism, which is now in the headlines. We have also in this case uh, a project uh, very much driven by Robert Gold, uh, who has already done uh, a paper on populism and on the, 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 the social economic drivers of populism, uh, which um, are identified as being one of the major drivers of populism also in Germany and, and beyond. Now we want to go beyond and also have the, the follow up discussion on given what the drivers are, what are the most um, 
efficient policies uh, that may help against uh, populism. And then we are in the midst of what everyone is talking about, a lot of people are talking about in economics, is Joe Biden already doing this, is already applying uh, these policies against um, populism. And that will be tested, a real life experiment tested uh, in, in a couple of years, maybe in two years, maybe in four years, when the uh, the voters in uh, uh, the, the people in, in in the US will vote for this or against this, and maybe the big question is: Will this avoid uh, uh, Donald Trump to come back or someone else, uh, or not? Discussions. Um, I will present them later again. And just uh, to finish uh, uh, the brief introduction for this afternoon. We have certainly one of our highlights of this workshop with um, the former CEO, Siemens CEO, Joe Keza, uh, who will be in the room, and uh, Danny Roderick uh, from Harvard, who will be here from via Zoom, via video, moderated by Nicola Brandt on globalization. I will come back to, to this, but I think everyone of you knows how interesting it will be to have these two people in the room and discuss this topic. Um, a very brief overlook, uh, overview, I, I will talk about this uh, again later on workshop day two. We will tomorrow start with a, 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 a session on fis, uh, financial fraud and uh, regulation, financial regulation. As you know, there has been a lot of trouble in Germany about, uh, around Wirecard and others, uh, huge um, uh, topics. and. The big question in our sense has been, is there a need to renew the paradigm of fisc fiscal regulation uh, in Germany? And we'll have a, a very interesting intro introduction by Gerhard Schick and uh, Martin Helwig, and a commentator among the commentators, your know, Cookies, uh, State Secretary in the Ministry of Finance. Um, we will have a second major session on climate, climate challenge. Will Germany manage the transition? This will be a, a very important session with very interesting inputs on hydrogen, on car industry, on uh, on industry competitiveness, and others um, to to discuss to be discussed tomorrow in the morning. In the afternoon, we will then go to the question how to finance a lot of things that we would imagine in this new German model on Germany's future, and very practically in the next four years when the new government will be in place. And this will be about how to, how to reform fiscal rules, how to reform Schuldenbremse and uh, the Euro, European fiscal rules. And we will end the day tomorrow with a, an input by a lecture by Harold James on globalization, which will, is very provocative, I can promise. And just last word on, on th Thursday, there will be um, a session, a special topic on uh, central banks. And we are honored to have Isabel Schnabel from the ECB and among others, uh, Adam Tooze and um, uh, Laurence Tubiana, who has been the architect of the Paris Agreement, Climate Agreement. And it will be fascinating to discuss with these people on the new, on potentially new mandates uh, for the ECB.